For some time now, I've got it in my head that I want to build a, a new robot. And if you're not familiar with my YouTube channel, you probably don't know that I've already built one before. But it really isn't that great. It's only a four axis robot. It's got the three bendy axes and the one rotational axis. So it can't really move. Uh, well, it can't move like it's supposed to. It doesn't have enough degrees of freedom. But before I start actually doing this, I need to figure out how I can do it and uh, if I can gear it down with compound planetaries, if they are efficient enough and if they're strong enough to be able to build a robot out of them. So today I'm gonna test uh, this compound planetary, which Ross Korsky actually designed. I believe it's based off of my 66.46 to one that I used in this robot, but it's got some changes to it that uh, maybe I'll show you later. Uh, but today I'm gonna test it and see if I can break it with a NEMA 23 motor. So uh, let's find out, let's get right into it. Hey guys, and welcome to Geared On For What? I'm gonna set this up and uh, we'll get right into it. Of course, I'll have the scale facing this way by the time we do that. So, first thing I gotta do, well, I gotta check to see if I set this gearbox here, we are gonna have a slight error in. First off, I should set it up this way. So if I set this gearbox down here, I'm gonna have a slight error in the fact that it should be to where the center of this should be horizontally level with where this point touches the scale, which means that I technically should put another inch of material in there, but I don't have anything that's exactly an inch. So we're gonna try to figure out something there. If I'm really, really lucky, I can get one of these to split down the center. Now, if I had like a table saw, this would be uh, no problem at all, but I don't, so uh, I'm just fooling around here, I guess. So I know that every time I try to put screws in the end of the, these uh, two by twos, they always split. And I suppose now that I'm trying to get it to split, you know what? I wonder if I just did two of these. Two of these is going to be pretty close then I don't have screws long enough. I just can't win. <laughs> oh. Well, that didn't work. I wasn't really expecting it to, but I was hopeful. <laughs> oh God. Hey, I got it. Now is it going to be usable? Not very straight, but I can straighten that out with my sawzall. So apparently this arm weighs nothing, so that's not going to come into play. So basically what this is, is this mount has grooves for uh, this side of the gearbox in this part, and then there's grooves for this arm that attach to this part. So if I insert this in there just part way, you can see that uh, that the arm is attached to the gearbox. And if I pushed it in there all the way, uh, the arm would be attached to the outside ring, and then this would be attached to the inside ring. Now this isn't the typical uh, compound planetary arrangement that I like to show off because it's only got two modules, which means that these planets could very likely do a twisty action inside here because they don't have anything supporting them on this end or on this end. Uh, so they're very likely to want to twist this way when there's torque pushing this side in this direction and this side in this direction. So we're gonna find out if this arrangement will work. Uh, Cause that's one thing I'm really, really curious about is will uh, just two modules work if you have this pitch diameter circle uh, on the gears so that they're actually not only engaging the ring, but using the ring as a support to hold them in the right place because there isn't a carrier to do that. So uh, yeah, let's get right to it. So I made this little adapter that fits right on the gearbox very loosely. And then it also has a D shaft hole for this NEMA 23 motor. I don't know if the motor's gonna overpower this and slip past or not, but we'll find out. Now I need to bolt this motor onto this mount. Forgot to mention, there's also ball bearings in here. Eh? <laughs> 
So I took the liberty of wiring up the motor and the Arduino board and uh, programming the Arduino. I just programmed this to use Excel stepper. We'll see if that's gonna work out. I've also got my power supply hooked up. Just in case you're curious, this actually, why these three stepper drivers are mounted on here is because this was uh, from my last robotics project that I actually never decided to finish. Uh, <laughs> because I, I decided not to finish it because I went into it without a plan. I, I need to have a plan. I need to know what works and what doesn't. And in order to know that, I have to actually test it myself especially because I'm designing, you know, the gearboxes that I want to use for it. I really want to use these. I'm hoping this test comes out good. So once I got my step and direction pins in the right order, it works. That was easy. Probably the easiest Arduino setup I've ever done. Now I need to get that slug printed out so that I can connect the motor shaft directly to this arm and we can get started with testing. So, I've got the Arduino board working. I've got a couple push buttons so I can step the motor either way, uh, one way or the other. Haven't really tested it too extensively. And my uh, gearbox slug just printed out. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna imitate uh, the output of this gearbox and tying it, the input in directly. So let's insert this. So as you can see, um, it's, uh, gripping to the motor shaft and let's give it a try so let's set the power supply at uh, max current because I don't want that to limit out on me and this thing is meant for 9 to 42 volts let's do 24 because 24 is much much more common now we turn on the scale and we're at zero ounces and let's give it a shot how much how much can this push About 11 ounces it can push before it skips a step back. So now for the fun part, uh, we get to put in this gearbox. So we have to pull a slug out. And line up the notches. Good. Now I'm going to spin the motor a little bit to get it to engage. I'm going to make the, gear, uh, the motor spin 10 times faster until we get this set down. Uh, and then I'm going to decrease that. Because uh, otherwise the motor won't have the same torque, you know, stepper motors have more torque at lower speeds. So I'm going to just increase the speed temporarily until it's setting on the scale. Because otherwise it's going to take forever. Okay, so once again, i turn the scale on. Now we are not touching the scale. And now I have to decrease the speed back down to 100. So this is gonna take an awfully long time. Okay, so I put the speed back down to 100 steps per second and this is not touching the scale. Uh, the scale is zeroed and let's give this a try. There's uh, oh, two pounds. Four pounds, five pounds, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got nine. So I'm gonna put a mark on the motor shaft. Yes, it is for sure skipping step. Well, I saw nine pounds before, so to be fair, nine pounds. Let's do the math on that. So it's six inches from center of the gearbox to this very point. The center of the gearbox is approximately centered on the scale. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. So with this information, the first thing we should do is figure out how much of a mechanical advantage the gearbox is giving, how much of a mechanical advantage it should be giving, and thus how efficient it is. And then we could figure out, I guess, the torque of the motor, if that's important. This result is not appealing. Uh, 156 divided by 11 is 14. It gives me a, a, a total gear advantage of 14 to one, I think. Wow, that's horrible. Uh, if you divide 156 by 11, which is ounces of pressure, you get uh, 14. And I thought that you should have, uh, well, 66 times more pressure with a 66 to one gearbox, uh, you know, versus no gearbox whatsoever. And I'm only getting a factor of 14 and that is really concerning to me. And also I'm wondering if maybe I did the math wrong. So in order to calculate efficiency, rather than dividing the amount of torque the motor has, or rather than dividing the amount of uh, torque the uh, gearbox has, 
with how much torque the motor has, maybe I should be using this equation. I'm probably gonna get the same answer. Okay, so I, I redid my spreadsheet in a way that makes more sense, but I didn't get an answer that makes me any happier. Wow. 21% efficiency, that's horrible, horrible. So here's what I did, We've got the gear ratio, motor only, gear ratio is one. Motor with gear ratio, gear ratio 66.46, pressure. Uh, so without the gear ratio it was 11 ounces, with it it was 156 ounces, uh, distance was always six inches away. So I calculated the torque by pressure and distance in inch ounces. Uh, it ended up to be 66 and 936 with the gearbox. Uh, for expected torque, of course, uh, the motor from the point of the shaft, not counting the motor, out is pretty much 100% efficient. So I would expect there to be 66 inch, ounce, inch ounces of torque there. Uh, I could double check that with what like Amazon says for that motor. Uh, so then, with the gear ratio, I would just expect that to have 66.46 times more torque, and it doesn't. It only has 21% more torque. So I've concluded through my math that this gearbox is 20% efficient, but there's no way that that's actually true. So uh, through my uh, genius ideas, I decided that I'm going to do this test again one more time to, to get a good answer. I'm gonna test the gearbox first this time, and then I'm gonna test the motor. I'm not gonna change anything with the Arduino program, and hopefully it was a fluke, that, that result that I got. And this time we're gonna go in metric mode, because metric is fun. Thirty six point five kilograms. By the time I push the button, the motor spins too far and skips a step already. So I do have to change the speed of it. Or I'm actually not changing the speed, I'm changing how far it's moving. Two sixty-five. We'll call it that. Okay. Now I'm gonna put the gearbox back in there because I had to adjust the Arduino program and I said I wasn't going to. Okay. Thirty-six point five I think I saw 38 there for a second. Nothing quite says professional, like filming a computer screen. So I went ahead and uh, made a copy of my table, except I changed pressure to grams and torque to uh, gram inches because I figured Europeans would just love me for that. Uh, so I expected that torque and for efficiency, I still got, if I multiply this by 100, 22%. Here I only had 21. 21% efficiency, but now I got an extra percentage. Still ain't much though. I guess metric didn't help me at all. Um, so I, I think what's going on here is that this gearbox is, is a very bad design. It would be a, a decently bad idea to build a robot with, which is unfortunate because I really, really wanted to do that. Anyways, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. I'm sorry that this turned out so bad. Maybe I'll, I'll reinvent the wheel here a bit and, and try to make one that's a bit better and still compact and 3D printable. So yeah, thanks for watching.